The importance of spending time with your partner. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your Uplifting Life partner. Now, this one is very important because I've had a couple of uh, people talk to me about this recently, and uh, most of them married, and so I want to cover uh, why is this important and understanding um, when it's needed, when it's not. Um, we have to first understand there's a difference between quantity and quality. Just because we're in the house together and we, especially with this COVID thing, you know, you maybe end up in the house together the whole day. So there's a difference in us being in the same house and us actually being in each other's presence right? Sitting across from each other, sitting side by side. That's what I mean by quality. And what are we doing with that time? Because even just sitting in front and watching a movie is good. But is that necessarily quality time, especially if it's something that you do all the time? To me, quality is anything that's going to actually bring you guys closer. Now, again, that's why I said if the movies are something that you guys both enjoy, it could be something that brings you closer together. So in that case, it would be good. It would be some quality time. But if you're just used to sitting in front of the TV together and it's on and both of you kind of got your own things going, one's on the telephone, one's doing something, down, even though you're still in front of the TV, you guys follow what I'm saying? There's a difference between quality and quantity. And then we have to go to figure out how important is time with your partner. Now, I believe sometimes some quality time is going to be important in all relationships or you don't have a relationship, but how much time is actually needed? Well, that's something that's going to come between you and your partner doing what we always talk about, the safe zone, because you have to figure out, remember we talk about the needs of a human being. And uh, another way of saying that is you've heard people talk about speaking a person's language. And that means knowing what's important to them. For some people, they want time. You giving them your time shows that you love them. For some people, again, as we talk about the language, for some people, if you just give them gifts, you don't necessarily have to be present because for them, they cool. They like, I got my gifts. I got my toys. I can play with my toys. When I see you, I see you. I'm not necessarily saying that's healthy or not healthy. I personally don't want to be in a relationship that I can give you a material thing and you're cool and it doesn't matter if you see me. But um, again, you got to be able to speak people's language and know what's important to them. So the reason I'm stressing the time thing is because life changes, things happen, and sometimes we've gotten accustomed to spending a certain amount of time with our partner. And then something like the COVID comes along and then puts us in that position where we're spending more time together than we would normally do. Now, is that good or bad? Again, depending on the person and what their needs are. One of the people I was talking to, uh, the thing that's getting them is uh, doing this COVID, they're not able to move anymore without their partner. It's like if they decide they want to go to the store, the partner wants to go. The partner wants to know, well, why do you have to go now? And it's like, it's almost at a point where she can't even go to the restroom without him following right behind. Folks, that can get to a point where um, that becomes actually a turnoff and could actually ov overwhelm or, is overwhelm a good word? Well, anyway, be adding too much to the relationship in terms of you're not allowing your partner to have any space to actually breathe. That can actually turn into a negative in your relationship. Because if you're a person that thinks, well, I'm giving them a bunch of time, that means it's making us closer. It may, and it may not. It may actually backfire on you. I had another young lady saying basically what I'm talking about here. And her particular position, but she's still going through the same thing where the husband wants to be with her all the time. That part is the same as the first person I was talking about. But for her, she wants the space. 
she enjoys having her own time to do her own things, to be able to go hiking or to be able to um, just go to the park or ride her bike or do her exercising program, whatever. She likes a long time. She's like me in terms of she's a person that could go to a movie by herself and be good. You got to be able to understand, is your partner that person? And you got to be willing to give them that space. That's a different way of seeing time, but that's time. You got to give them the time to be alone. Sometimes that's the best use of their time is not being with you. And allow them to, that old saying about the absent heart, you know, the absence make the heart grow fonder. Yeah, that's the same, but anyway. And it's not saying it has to be long periods of time, like weeks and months or whatever. But if I have to look at you almost every hour, like in this particular instance with the COVID, sometimes I may just not want to see you. And for some of you, you got to understand why that's probably a good thing to make sure that doesn't happen because... As humans, we link things together. So if something happens where your partner is upset about something that has nothing to do with you, but they keep seeing your face, but they're frustrated about something, and then they're seeing your face, and then they're frustrated about something else, and they're seeing your face. You guys see where I'm going, right? Because as human beings, we link things up, your face gets linked to frustration. And then all of a sudden you say hi to your partner and they got attitude and they don't know why. And you definitely don't know why. And the reason is because they've linked up the frustration that's going on to your face. That's why I talk about all the time that you have to be very careful when you're in a highly emotional state, what you link up because stuff like that happens. That's why um, you know, something like, uh, um, and this is getting off track a little bit, but something like if you go to a funeral service and everybody is tapping you on the shoulder and they're saying, are you okay? There becomes a time later on, it could be a week later, a month later, a year later, where somebody does that to you and tears start flowing and you not understand why. And it's like, that's crazy. Where did that come from? And it's because you've linked up that little tap to that emotional event which made you cry, and now all of a sudden... So, again, the reason I'm stressing that is be careful when you're in a highly emotional state, what you're linking up. So, but the reason I wanted to cover this time thing is because I have had that conversation a lot recently, and I know a lot of it has to do with the COVID. And, and the crazy part is most of it is coming from women that are saying they want space, away from the husbands or the boyfriends. And we all know normally it's it's kind of, uh, you know, at least from a guy's ego and pride, it's her always wanting to be around him and follow him or whatever. At least that's his hope, his wish. But in these particular instances, it's the guy that's the one that's kind of, because, you know, we've been told, well, men, we're macho. We're not emotional creatures. These guys are totally emotional. You guys know I've said that all the time. Guys are very emotional creatures. The world has been feeding us garbage for, for the longest, and people still believe that. Guys are very emotional creatures. Unfortunately for a lot of guys, their ego and pride gets in the way. But the, the young ladies that I'm talking about, the ego and pride is gone from the husbands. The husbands are like, they like, for lack of a better term, they like the dog that's just following everywhere you go. It's like you walk through the house, they walk through the house. You go outside, they go outside. You go to the restroom, if you close the door, they at the door sniffling, like when you coming out. You've been in there for a long time. So my whole point and the point of this video is time and spending time with your partner is very, very crucial. But understand their love language. How important is time and what's a good amount of time for them? Um, and then allow your partner space. Cause this is the one that, that, that could create a lot of issues. If you don't give them that space, then it kind of backfires because a lot of times, again, people link up spending more time. That's a good thing. It can be, but it could also hurt depending on how much time you're actually putting in, or is it more like it's forced time, at least from your partner's perspective, that they're feeling like they're being forced to spend this time with you 
when they prefer to be spending time alone. And that's again, as I've talked about earlier, and I've talked about on other videos, that's why you have to have a safe place. So if your partner tells you, dear, you know what? I just want to take an hour to myself. I just want to go over and read a book or I just want to go to the park and sit there. Back off. Allow them that opportunity. Allow them that freedom. Because if not, you're going to overwhelm them and you're going to create problems actually in your relationship. And then you become one of those partners that later goes, I gave them everything. I was always there for them. You turn around I'm there helping, doing, that was the problem. You see what I'm saying? You didn't allow them to actually live. And that's, again, why I talk about um, when people talk about that man being um, the head of the house and I wear the pants. That's why I tell guys, be very careful because a lot of guys that I know that use that are guys that want to control their house. And that's their definition is they think basically they call the shots and their wife is there to serve them. Nothing can be further from the truth, but that's what they believe, that that's her job. That's what being the man of the house or what leadership actually is. And folks, nothing can be further from the truth. As you've heard me say before, a leader understands the more power that I get, the more of a servant. You guys heard what I said. The more of a leader you become, the more of a servant you actually take on as your responsibility. So it's not your job to sit back and try to dictate. It is your job to find out how you can serve those that are allowing you to lead them. And that's the key word, allowing, not a dictator. Allowing you to lead them. How can you serve them better? And some of that's going to be finding out where they need that freedom of time and allowing them to have that. And when they need some time with you, being there to give that. And folks, we can only get clarity by going to that safe place and having a conversation and being open to hearing where our partner is coming from and, and then helping them uh, achieve their needs, at least what we can do to help. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you on Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you next Monday. For those on Relationship Thursday, I'll, I'll see you back here next Thursday. Um, Whatever you do, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. You see the things that I got going on. And folks, remember, if you're not having fun, <laughs> you know you should be doing something else. Make sure you spend time with your partner, but get some clarity on that time. And more importantly, allow them that freedom of time to spend by themselves because as you've heard me say before, we should take at least an hour a day for ourselves, so that we can move on with our day. Because if not, then you get overwhelmed and the world starts to feel like everything is about everybody else. And there is no time for me. So take that hour a day for yourself. And as a partner, make sure you understand the significance of that and allow that to take place in your relationship. And I'll talk to you guys later. And again, enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye.